This is Alex Harris for ESBL Boxing. Pleasure to be joined by Solomon Dakers. Solomon, press conference day today. Another uh, magnificent seven card for you. How are you feeling? Feeling good this time round. I'm feeling fit. I'm feeling sharp. I'm feeling relaxed. And, you know, of course, coming in for a rematch against kind of a, an unexpected rematch. But are you feeling more confident than ever? Yeah, yeah. Like this time I'm, I'm prepared, you know, for anyone that, that steps in the ring. Um, you know, obviously a disappointment with the Adelaide pulling out of the fight. But, you know, we're just thankful that we can still box on the weekend and, and still um, and put a, a poor performance to bed, actually, which is probably going to be better for, for me. And in general, you know, a fight here where it was your last fight, it was a closer fight than perhaps expected. But did you overlook him as an opponent? It wasn't that I overlooked him. It was just... It was just a late notice fight, you know. Um, usually, I'm, I'm, I'm training hard. I'm dialed in for my opponents, and I'm, I'm entering that ring knowing I've done everything and I'm fit for ten rounds. It was just a matter of, you know, two weeks notice. I wasn't total ready, total fight ready. And maybe I did think, you know, he hasn't got the experience, so you know, no problem. But you know, he's a sharp boxer, and you know, I, I scraped through it. And I think just my little bit of experience just gave me the edge in the last few rounds, to be honest, just to just to get the victory. And I suppose for people and fans in general, a lot of fighters talk about how important having a full camp is, but as a fighter yourself, how important is it? It's more than important, it's everything. Especially with talk, if you go into a four round or six round, you know, you can be ticking over and you know, you might get like a journeyman or something or you know, someone that's not very good. But going up against someone that's undefeated, sharp and hungry, you, you can't be um, going in there underprepared. Um, but it was just a matter of, you know, we're just gonna fight now. And I just said, fuck it, man, let's go, you know, let's just get the fight done. And, you know, I could have easily said no. And we would have never seen that, you know what I mean? I would have never entered the ring in that condition. But, you know, I put, put everything on the line there, scraped through. But this time, you know, I'm, I'm in the ring properly, how I should be. Were you a little bit annoyed that he wasn't here today so you could say something to him? You know, I can't I can't, I can't have no bones with Webster because, you know, he's, he's took the fight on late notice. You know, he's got maybe other things to do, working or commitments. So, you know, he's not here today, you know, but hopefully he's here tomorrow and the main thing is here fight night, you know. Um, so I can't really say anything about his, his behalf on, on that one because he's took the fight late notice. And David Adelaide, of course, pulled out of this one. And for you, it seems like you are frustrated. Do you think the fight will ever happen? Personally, it would have happened by now. You know, we've had we've had three fight dates, you know, you know, two two of which, you know, we've been announced on and gone to press conference I've gone to press conference on my own gone down to London um, and I've never seen him once you know what I mean so I just don't I don't waste my time with him no more well, I've, six months ago I've wasted for him could have boxed in March if he wasn't gonna we've waited on him specifically um, so wasting time for someone that don't really want to fight he was once uh, one of the biggest names for Queensbury heavyweight wise and do you feel like perhaps he's a little bit afraid to go in with you and then lose and then go back to where kind of square one? It's definitely what it is I think because like I say he's took one loss and then if he takes another one and he's own stable his opportunities are limited then um, but this is boxing man you know you've got to get in the ring and fight and, and prove yourself if you want to be in this game but as far as I'm concerned, I'm just focused on my Saturday night. And I suppose in general, frustrations wise in boxing, have you come to realise that it is a frustrating sport? Yeah, every, everyone, when you turn pro, you know, there's more in the background than you see for fighting, you know. Sometimes, you know, you want to fight regular, you, you can't, even when you're not injured, you know, you might not get the shows and you have to wait months here and there, but just got to keep your head down and just, just keep working. But in general, do you feel like the heavyweight division as a whole is in a really good position at the moment? Yeah, it is heavyweight division, you know. It's, we've got undisputed champion for the first time, you know, minus we've got a vacate on IBF or whatever. We've got an undisputed champion and I think, you know, things in the next two years, there's new names coming through, you know, there's big things in Saudi happening. So I think there's big opportunities coming up. And for yourself, do you look at these big fights in Saudi and think that is that possibility for yourself there? Yeah, man, big fights anywhere because I'm just backing myself to just go all the way to become a world champion. You know, a lot of people say that, but I'm really backing myself to do it because I've been in there with all the world champions sparring. I'm, I'm training. I know what the training's like. I know how hard I work. I know how good I'm going to be and how good I am. And that, you know, the, the sky is the limit for me, really. And so, you know, you get through here. You look very impressive. What would kind of be the wanted next step for you? 
a British title. Definitely British title. That's the next step in it. English title. This is my third fight for the English. British title next. Do you feel like it would be a vacant title by that point? I don't know. Man, see how this Wardley Clark situation plays out. If the rematch, you know, if it's one of them, hopefully that's what I would like to do. And how do you, I suppose, see the rematch possibly playing out? It's an interesting one. I'm sure they're both going to be tightening up and making adjustments. I think Fraser will probably tighten up a few things because, you know, he got a point deduction, a little um, flash knockdown in there that he'll probably be, um, you know, tightening up on. And I think Fraser was the better boxer early on in the rounds, but it turned to a bit of a slugfest in the end. So I think they're going to, um, I don't know, man, it's going to it's gonna be a bit interesting. But I think Fraser might tighten up on a few more. There's a few more things Fraser can adjust with experience than Wardley can, I think. And of course, next week, Joyce's aura. And, you know, it's an interesting fight to be made. Of course, Joyce perhaps not looking at his best anymore to perhaps what he used to. But do you feel like he'll be able to get back to that top level? Um, I don't know what level he can get back to, but I feel like he can, he can definitely um, beat Chisora. But like I said, like 18 months ago, Joe Joyce was looking like indestructible. Um, and, you know, there's vulnerabilities that come about now. But I think he's got enough in the tank for um, Chisora. Which is always going to be come swing, come out swinging. He's going to be throwing the overhand right. He'll probably be landing it, and you know, what, see how Joyce's chin's holding up like it, like it always used to. And um, you know, Joyce is going to do what he does, which is be the juggernaut, man. And how important is it mentally to be a hundred percent for a fight? You know, perhaps people are saying that Joyce mentally might not be quite as strong now. Yeah, you know, the mental game is a big part in boxing. So obviously, it is a is, is a big big part where you know you you know. I've done everything I can in preparation to the fight because come fight week, you know, it's too late. Um, but it depends how his sparring's going, how he's feeling and stuff like that. I'm sure you'll have confidence. And of course, you know, fighting not too far away from home for yourself. And how nice is it to be able to fight in a venue like this? It's quite a popular venue now for boxing. Yeah, yeah man, it's, it's a blessing really because, you know, I can got a few more home comforts. You know, I haven't got a... You know, looking around where to eat, you know, finding takeaways, trying to eat healthily. And, you know, I've got my own kitchen. I can get, sort my own food out, little things like that. You know, just little things that are going to help. Excellent. Solomon, one final question. Of course, for the support coming out for you, what would you like to say to them? Yeah, man, just show up. Everyone's, everyone that's going to be coming there local, um, you know, supporting me. And uh, thank you very much. And just enjoy the night. Excellent. Solomon, thank you very much, man.